Whew. All right. So, hey, look. Somebody wants a quick 9x9 nine nine game, but they're ranked like eight ranks higher than I am. So even though they send this, say that's a friendly match, um, I'd get blown out of the water playing it. Let's play some 19x19, 19 19, though. Um, just a normal pace of a 19x19 19 19 game. Oh, check that out. You get a little notification thing here that says, we're looking for a game. Just to uh, pacify people who are like, is it looking for a game? I don't know. How long have you been looking? This is actually a reasonable way to indicate that um, you put a seek out there, that it is in fact out there, and that we're looking for a game. Um, oh, so I should introduce this. Um, welcome back. We're playing some Go on the online Go server. Um, so that's at online-go.com. Um, this is supposedly one of the more beginner-friendly servers. It's, in my opinion, pretty similar in spirit to Lee Chess, even though it's not entirely open source. They did open source the front end, and many enthusiasts are contributing to uh, the front end development. The back end's all proprietary. I believe this is sponsored out of Korea. I'm not sure, but it's free to participate. They ask for donations. Um, and yeah, it's a very welcoming place. They've got tournaments, they've got ladders uh, for the more competitive people out there, and they've got uh, puzzles and tutorials and such. So it's a useful site for learning um, how to play Go and they've made a number of advances with their front end recently and people really enjoy that. Um, that said, usually I actually use the client called Ancient Go, which was released in Steam uh, about a month ago. It's been in early access for many months. I bought into it the, in the day that it was available early access. I'm like, this is amazing, it's beautiful. The target audience is the American player who doesn't know diddly about Go. And it looks wonderful on a stream, but the one thing it doesn't have is the ability to analyze games afterward. I mean, you can go back and forward through the move list, you can try alternative moves, but there's no collaborative analysis session with the opponent sort of thing. And I'm mostly of the opinion that for a stream format, that's fine. But people like it if from time to time I use this site. Uh, directly, as opposed to using the Ancient Go client. And not everybody uses Ancient Go anyway, because you have to pay for it. But, yeah, it's pretty cheap. Oh. Wow. Um. Okay, I got a handicap game. I've never played one of these before. I'm playing against somebody who's two stones stronger, or two ranks higher than I am. So, I'm getting a two-stone handicap? I didn't know it would do that. Um, I'm not even sure how to play a handicap game. Hmm. I think this does merit some kind of response in the corner. Hopefully that's not too aggressive. Right, and then I can seal this corner. Let's see, how does this look on the stream? I can't help but wonder if maybe that top menu is a bit distracting. Um, this is a large corner slash side of the board. So I'll let him build up something over here. Oh, but I can invade maybe now. Um, I don't know if it's worth it. Like, invading's not the largest move on the board. Um, larger would probably be just asserting that I own something. Um, yeah, I'll take the top end of the board and intend to play here next. So just playing all the knight's move things. Um, 
Let's play a large knight's move. Yeah, I I should have gone to the settings. I should have known somehow that handicaps are the default. Um, not sure how I should have known that, but apparently I should have. Either way, um, yeah, I guess that's the way to correct it. Um, so I'm not uh, doing handicaps in the future. Uh, okay. I guess he surrounds the stone, but I get something out here. Is that the idea? Or do I actually try to live? I get a sense that a bad thing might happen if I try to live. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not familiar with these invasions yet. Um. So this is actually a difficult decision for me. Um, I think I build. Uh, I think I extend down here though, because I think if I try to be combative, um, yeah, like two stones against two stones, that's too much for this position. So I think I have to extend downward. Toward the edge of the board, that is. Um, okay. Oh. Well, damn. That's not good. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm taking the corner, though. Like, if I knew I were taking it, <clears throat> I'd be more comfortable doing this, but... Um, but I think I'm just getting surrounded there. Okay, I'm taking the corner, apparently. No, I like, I have no eye space. How am I possibly living here? I don't understand that. I guess we extend and see if we can make two eyes. I've got tons of eye space. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. Uh, okay, so if I like, put a stone there, I'm... yeah, I don't think that's great, but maybe I do something like this. Uh, maybe I'm okay. I don't know. Maybe I just keep going build like the infinitely long wall and give white all this central influence um, but if I have tons of ice space then it's not so urgent to play there and I could play elsewhere or like I don't know here or something um, could also and do some third line stuff. White's building a large center. Um, could also do something like this, I guess. White probably just pushes. I don't know why I'd even do that, because this is a really small pocket. Um, I think. He's reduced me in, like, every part of the board. So I'm not sure... Do I try to push back? Seems like something that would be, might be worth fighting for. Okay, but you said I have tons of eye space, but it's urgent, though. This is what I don't get. Like, how can it be both? <laughs> I mean, one additional push isn't going to ruin me here. I'm threatening to push right through, so he's going to have to connect. Um, but after he connects, I'm probably okay. I mean, maybe it's still urgent. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting like the whole left side of the board, and that makes up for all this influence um, that he's building. 
Alright, Nihane's. Um, that was going to happen eventually. And yeah, I think we're fine. Okay, that's eye space. That is definitely eye space. And then we just like go back to playing some Go. I don't know, like I build a base here, I guess, but he pushes through. Um, I could put something out here, maybe? I don't know. People want me to play Go. <laughs> uh, I could go here. That's a shape. Sure. That puts some pressure on white. And no pressure on my stone. Okay, he's going for the little pocket there. Good for him. So let's just build a base. Say, so, okay, you get that stone. Have fun with it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this increases my central influence. Might get my little pocket thing killed. Um, or I could fight back and prevent him from connecting this corner to the left side, maybe. I don't know. Go is hard. You know, for those who didn't already know this, just public service announcement, Go is difficult. Um, sure. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? We're both double-digit players. There's fun stuff everywhere to be had. Oh. Really? Okay. So I've Hanade and um, you building this really ugly shape. Just in case you didn't know that this is ugly, I'm informing you. Um, do we run? Do we fight? I don't know. I get the sense that running might be wise, but also building up some something here might be okay. Oh, I see, I see. So it's keeping the right side separated from the left, and... Okay, so he actually has some point in what he's doing. Um... Yeah, my connectivity is suffering a bit. I don't know where to put a stone. There's so much going on. Um... If I put one here, he probably places there. Um, if I place here, he probably goes there. If I go here, he probably pushes through. If I go there, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, running might be okay. Just because I'm really not sure what else is going on. And I'm sure I could connect one way or the other if I do run. But... Uh, this is actually an interesting point here, too. No matter how he approaches all this, um, this does connect me. It's not so aggressive, but... Uh, um, okay. Like, how's he going to prevent me from connecting? I wonder. And I go on this other side, and he cuts there? I don't know. This cross-cut stuff going on, and maybe I don't get to connect. Um, but I do get a lot of influence.
Howdy. Yeah, we've got really cool shapes going on here. I meant to check. Um, okay. Uh, the chat looks okay-ish. I've seen it look better. I'll have to improve it somehow, but... Um... He's still doing things here. I don't know, like, what his aspiration is. He's connecting his stones, fine, but that doesn't seem to... I don't know. If I play there, can I even connect to it? Well, from one side or the other, I surely I can. Um... But would something a little higher be more valuable? Um, we could just make a base. Wait, no, he's also threatening to just put a stone here. And so this reduces my space a little bit. If I put one here, he's got to respond, because otherwise I just push right through. Um, so let's strengthen this weak stone here. Yeah, so he, this is a bulky shape. Um, I don't know. Do I have enough eye space in this corner? Do I like push through here just to make sure I've got space? It looks like I'm getting surrounded. I've got a weak group here. I mean, two, strong, two stones next to each other isn't the weakest thing, but in this general vicinity, it is the weakest thing, I think. Um, if I just play here, he's going to play something over there-ish. If I play here, he goes on top, I think. Or he might jump in. That could be fun. Let's, I'm curious where this goes. Could I turn English-only chat off? Well, I don't know. Like, last time I had people speaking here in other languages, and nobody knew how to moderate it. So, is there a uh, benefit to turning it off? This shape does not look very strong. Um, <laughs> okay. He's doing something here. He certainly kept me divided, but um, I don't see the benefit. I could push underneath there, um, only because he's forced to respond, I think. So this guarantees I have enough eye space, basically. Um, okay. He's unable to chat. Oh, why is that? I don't understand. Um, doesn't Twitch allow people to chat? Even if they say, like, English isn't their native language and stuff, aren't they still allowed to? Okay, I found an eye. Um, I think this finds another eye. Well, so does this. Um, yeah, so we found a second eye here. So I just place, like, well, okay. So I'm safe there. He did a lot of really aggressive probably over-aggressive moves. Um, I 
I shouldn't hit this weak stone. I should increase my influence somewhere. I don't know, do I just like run out here or here or something? Since we're building toward the center. Black's all cramped. I guess so. Oh, Simon Atari. I better respond to that. Um. Oh, I see, I see. That's weird. Um, I guess I could turn it off, but on the other hand, then like falls to me doing. Well, I should turn it off. Uh, I have to go open the dashboard to do that. Um, uh, okay, so. I'm not seeing what White's up to. I mean, he wants... he's building a large central influence, but... Um, is there nothing I can do to combat that? Is it already too late? Um, should I cut... no, I mean, this is too aggressive. Uh, I could push into the corner, but that's no fun. Um, it's not too late. Okay. Yeah, I don't think he wanted to do that. He was aiming for something else, I'm sure. And he requested the undo immediately, so... It's like, he either had that... I don't know, pre-moved somehow, or... That was just an accident. Okay. He's getting this big pocket here, which is concerning, but... I get space, too. Um, am I concerned about this crosscut idea? Yeah, I think I am. I'll just can see this tiny little space there, and then cap it. So he gets this cut, but I don't think it's so effective here. Have I overpressed? Uh, damn it. This always happens. I always overpress. Um, well, so now he caps me and I just die. Or maybe not. Um, that's really strange to me. What's he doing? Um, I 
I don't get it. If I go there, he goes here. I cap. He goes there. I go somewhere. But I should also deal with this tiny little group here that... This can't possibly be alive. And by placing here, I threaten to connect to there. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to. undo. Are you joking, man? I mean, that that's a misclick, but... <sighs> I wonder if he's trolling me. I really do. Do I connect? Do I close in and let him cut me? How urgent is everything here? He's got one, two, three liberties. Um, I think if I do try to kill him, I start with this. Oh, but then he successfully connects up to that little tiny annoying group. So maybe I have to start with... Um, I'm not sure. It seems like this is the sort of position person should be able to read. This group has one, two, three, or one, two liberties up there. Three, four, five down here. Um, not exactly five, but I've got one, two, three, four and the sh same shared liberty there. Um, I certainly get the sense that he's trying to kill something. I just don't think he's doing a very good job at it. If I go there... He goes here. One, two, three, four, five ish. One, two, three, four. I think I get there first. One, whatever. I think I'm there first, is the point. We'll see just how accurate or otherwise I am. Okay, we've got to cap this. There's cutting points galore, but I think I'm okay. I probably should connect first, and then try to cap that. Because, you know, if I cut him in half, then I don't care so much if these three live. <sighs> this is what happens when I have 20 seconds left, and I did not manage my time very well. One, two, three liberties down here. But if I place a stone, maybe I... Weird. Does he really think that this connects? I don't understand. Or is that just out of desperation that he plays this? Or is he just trying to reduce me at the risk of dying? 
Um, this fills in my own liberty, giving me three and a half versus his one, two. Well, he has more liberties. Hmm. I am exhausted at this point, and I just want the game to be over. I think I'll succeed at that aim. It's not the greatest aim in the world, though, is it? You could have just captured me. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have put the coordinates on. That's my fault for not using them. Um, sorry about that. I'd forgotten that you guys actually prefer to see them. Okay, so he's threatening to kill... The oh, really? Um... All right, so this is a snapback, right? No, it's not, because the whole freaking group is... Okay, whatever. I succeeded. I was very successful there in concluding the game. Um, yeah, thanks for the game. Go is hard. Um... Sure, the capturing variation in the chat here. Alright, so... How do I analyze the game? Yeah, so many mistakes are made. Um... So I think this move that I had earlier... Uh, what was it? I was commenting that I should be playing somewhere around here sometime now. Um, trying to force him to connect and deprive himself of a liberty so I don't have that situation which happened at the end of the game. Um, well, we're in analyze mode. Other move is more slack. So I picked this. Oh, but I could have done this. That's interesting. Because um, this crosscut is ridiculous. It just completely fails. Um, and threatens, or threats to try to make the crosscut work um, are just a waste. Yeah, I did it in the other corner too, because I don't know Joseki. <laughs> um, I suppose my opponent probably knew them better. That this makes a lot more sense because it actually gives some purpose to the invasion. Um, white doesn't want to play that stone. That wouldn't gain white very much anyhow. I mean, if he did other things, sure, this would be good. But uh, yeah, I did the same mistake in the other corner. Um, oh, this is the Joseki. So. I don't worry about that, because I can connect. Wait, so how close was I? I was not close at all. This... Joseki is there. It's not this. I think I saw this the other day, that um, black is fine here, I suppose. Um, You don't want to push when you're behind, so you have to jump. Oh! Alright, so we got this in the game, but I kept pushing. Um, and jumping's okay, because again, I can connect if I have to. And yeah, this makes a lot more sense, because I'm at least trying to influence the center. I mean, if he does that, more power to him, but... Um, He's invested a stone, and it's pretty slow. So, yeah, it's okay. Uh, that makes sense. 
Yeah, Sente is a nice thing to have. Especially if you have a clue what you're doing. Like, the initiative is good in chess. Um, if you have a plan. Man, I lost a two-stone handicap game. Where I started with three of the corners. Ah. Uh, so... That... I don't know. Not sure how I feel about that. I definitely want to, um... Not play handicap games right now. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, overall, it was okay. Oh, we got a review. Alright. Yeah, I played too small, because I was... If you saw my last stream, I was playing very large moves and constantly dying. Um... Views done from Leo Speck. Yep. Uh, smooths. Oh. There's something more. Okay. Oh, I get it, I get it. Because this bottom side's already kind of resolved. So play this corner, not that. Okay. Yeah. I would have been a lot more comfortable if I'd done that. Also, it's good to know a three there is part of a corner, Joseki. Um, I actually have forgotten. Uh, yeah, that's in the wrong corner because of the way how much open space there is other places. I wasn't sure what to do here. Uh, could make a large corner with, oh, I could like protect the large corner or, well, I could do this. I've never seen this before, but I think I get the general ideas that um, C3 here is a point to play at some point in the future and that corner is just yours. Or 3-3. Three, three. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, it's possible. Um, that I, I would tend to go with B4, but uh, C5 looks good, too. Yeah, this this uh, playing the star point was good. It makes the largest space out of um, yeah. I mean, it's greedy, but we're playing in a handicap game, so maybe it's okay. Oh, I should just. Huh. Yeah, I should practice corner Joseki. Again, I didn't expect a handicap game, so I didn't think that sort of thing would be so relevant. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I'm threatening the corner, but I'm also threatening uh, to make a base here. Okay. Yeah. We're playing a handicap game, so White's playing some greedy moves. And... I could have done... I could have gotten much more. Um, I mean, yeah, I could have invaded the corner again. 
Just play a one, I assume he's saying one space jump, or one stone extension. Uh, from the weak side. Okay. So, this is almost a pincer, but uh, the stone's completely isolated, so that one space extension makes some sense. Um, yeah. Invading the corner would have been probably the strongest move. Oh, our fort, our thirteen doesn't even defend the corner. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> wow. Ah. Okay, so this was urgent. I guess it makes sense because I'm, like, getting surrounded on both sides that I have to play this sort of thing. Although this is what happened in the game. Um. I have to play 3-3. Three, three. And then, I didn't know. Maybe I do it like a uh, two-space extension here. Or yeah, take the corner. Duh. Again, I need to practice that stuff. I'm, I'm not used to my opponent just flubbing uh, that. But... I mean, he had a number of other things he had to do because... I've got a handicap, he has to play greedy stuff, but I have to capitalize on um, his moves. Yeah, this is where Zvish was saying I should have just played uh, C16 here. Like two stones facing two stones, and that, that works out just fine. <laughs> Not like this, he says. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the Joseki I actually saw the other day, where you get to play uh, C18, and it, that's actually okay. It's a lot to remember. Well, then White pushed for, I don't know why. Okay, so White jumps. Oh, I should jump here and return. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, it's just the same thing. Yeah. Ah, uh, I see. Because I have that nearby helping stone, I can be a little bit less conservative here. Oops. Yeah, this that would be a lot better use of White's um, turn. Huh. Okay. better. Yeah, it's definitely more aggressive. I played a lot of really passive moves this game. Yeah, and no, I... I have no concept of a, who's up and who's down. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe there's some instinct that I've developed, but in general, I'm just happy if my stones don't die. I should be aiming for more than that. <laughs> Especially because I do, like, this aggressive stuff on the other side. So it's like, yes, I'm passive in the one sense, but... Okay, so this is fine, apparently. 
I wasn't sure. This is pretty tense. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, Alright, thanks for the commentary. Yeah, this is a interesting situation here. Yeah, thanks for commentary. I, yeah, I wasn't sure how to re read this. Um, I mean, maybe this is okay. Um, so that doesn't work for white. Um, so if white can't play two there, I'm probably fine. Um, he doesn't have to play that though, that's too aggressive, but he could do this. Um, this looks okay for, well, I don't want to do, I guess I do. No, he needs to, like, run if he can. Um, and I might not be able to kill this, but um, White could have surely done uh, faster things than he played. So this whole variation of him playing two is probably not the most aggressive way for him to play this. This seems to make more sense, and we end up with this sort of thing. Assuming I try to connect, which maybe I don't try to do that. Because uh, it just leaves me all cut. Um, maybe I try doing this. I don't know. This doesn't look so great either. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think the same thing applies um, in many games, not just in Go, but if you're constantly making consecutive threats, as one great grandmaster once said, yeah, good things happen. Um, so, yeah, you want to be more ambitious. Um, and, I don't know, part of that might just be that... Um, well, from the outset, I didn't want to play a handicap game. That was kind of my mistake for putting the Seek out there and the way I put it there. Uh, I probably would have played more ambitiously if um, I were playing a more even game and it was more obvious, like, what to do. Because when I'm ahead, I don't know what to do. I really struggle with that. <laughs> um... When I'm even, I could just like play stones in random places, and either I missed something or I didn't. But uh, at least there's a recipe for figuring out what's going on in a normal Go game. But in a handicap game, I'm just I have no bearings. Like there's weaknesses everywhere. It's very imbalanced and confusing. Um. Yeah. You learn a lot more from playing aggressive moves. Let's play another game. Let's see if I could like turn off the freaking handicap. Default is enable. No preference, prefer, require. <sighs> is there no way to turn off the handicap? I don't want to play a freaking handicap game. Um, require handicap disable. There we go. That makes... They could have made this a little more intuitive, but okay. Fine. Um... Opponent rank range. I guess... Yeah, that's probably a fine range. 
I want to win some games. Can I just like turn this to like minus five, minus ten, minus fifty? Hope that somebody accepts it. It's strange to me that you would limit. Um, well, okay, I guess if you're a better player, you care more about this sort of thing. Um, I get my butt kicked if I play up, like, 5 cube, but if I play down 5 cube, I don't know. Fine, just to be fair, plus 5, minus 5. And, yeah, that's normal preferences and stuff. Hopefully it'll be easier to find a game... One, when I'm not requiring a handicap. Or not um, encouraging a handicap. And two, if I open the seek range to be against a wide variety of opponents. Yeah, I could change it to allowing me to play down five but up three. It feels hokey. So I should be fair and say minus 5 to plus 5. Um, even though somebody who's 5 stones better is not going to take that. Because they have better things to do with their time. Um, I mean, they might want to for some reason. I don't know. But in terms of getting a competitive game, they probably wouldn't want to pick me. If they were like 5, sto or five ranks better. Oh, wait, is that a plus or minus stone, or is that a plus or minus rank? I don't know, but here, let's move one pass. That sounds like an excellent strategy. Alright, so there's no cross game today. Bummer. Cross games are fun. I kind of wish that that were the starting position for Go. I'm sure there are, like, thematic events where... Um, People play cross games as the start position or something. Um, oh, I could go here. Well, that's too early to do that. Oh, well, I hate to do the symmetry thing, but I haven't found a better... Um, what's this move? Seven? I haven't found a more interesting thing to do on this move then um, to do the symmetrical idea. Okay, so we got a pincer. Uh, we counter pincer! No. Um, or we play the star point, or we just invade the corner. Well, this guy's better than we are. We could learn something if we try the invasion. Sure. Okay. This is like my third attempt ever at a corner invasion. Um, so I should apparently play these two stones facing each other. And if he Hanes, I counter Hane down here. And if he plays that, then I... So I don't get a tar read, I connect. If I remember right. I think, I mean, this is a solid move. And then that, and then I uh, go out this way. I think. This is not the punishment. Oh. Um, no, this is just my faulty memory. I'm not blaming anyone. <laughs> um, I mean, we got another corner here. We could try it again. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, there might be something going on there. <laughs> I think what he was showing me was a different position, though, that didn't have the stone on G3, or H3. Um, 
I mean, we've got this corridor, so... I'm not sure if this is larger than defending my corner. Um, defending this... Well, no, there's already a stone on this side of the board. Um, but, like, defending like something like this would be taking a ton of territory. Um... On the other hand, this is already... I mean, it's arrogant to call that territory. I don't know. It's hard to evaluate what's the largest part of the board. It's The largest part is everything from file K onward, the right half of the board. So clearly I should just play Tengen. Just connect my top stone to my bottom stone and... No. No. Um... I don't know. I mean, this is okay, but he's... Enclosure. So, yeah, I should do something like this. Five space extension. Approach. Uh, yeah, I think it's too early for me to invade, so I think I should enclose my own corner. Or just jump in, you know? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to jump? It's... this is... an amateur game. Jumping's fun. It's more fun than what he did there. Yeah, let's see. I mean, we're both amateurs. Where do we go? Where shall the wind take us? So, I'm thinking I Hane here, even though he cross cuts and yeah, something happens. But if I don't try to connect, then, like, what's the point? So, and then I do connect, maybe, or maybe I try to be more greedy, I don't know. Or maybe I just keep Haneing over and over, and he takes this 2 2 point, and then I cry. Probably that. Um, yeah, I mean, we connect underneath and live very small, or we try to do something more ambitious. And now do we connect? Maybe? I don't want to die, you know. <laughs> um, this feels okay. This might be okay, too. I mean, he's, he wants to play like there. Read it out. Alright. So if I play like F16, he plays E17, I play E18. Um, I'm okay there. I play this and just E18, then I can't connect. I mean, I could try to surround the E18 stone with like E17, and he plays C18, and I just die. It's probably not that great. Um, I could play E18. I mean,. This is so passive, though, and so sad. If I play this, though, I might just play at the head of these two. I'm probably okay with that. And I play up, and then he caps it again, and... I don't know. And then I cross-cut him. Uh, and then he pushes out there, and I... trap this G17 stone. Oh, this looks okay. This looks okay. And we're all ignoring the right side of the board where, you know, there's tons of potential for development. Um, maybe also my thing in the lower left dies. Probably not. I'm probably okay. But maybe I'm dead. <laughs>
I've got nothing to rescue these guys if he plays uh, the 4-2 or 2-4 point. So I have to find enough eye space and live there somehow. Um, but no, there should be ample space. I should be able to take this corner and somehow make two eyes out of it. Well, I got him thinking, too. Um, not sure what about. You could probably just play 3-3 three, three just for the fun of it. I always wonder, like, why don't people... Well, okay, I guess that answers itself very quick. quickly. If they just play 3-3, three, three, you just move in and attack it. Um, so that's why they play these approach moves first, and then jump in. Um, yeah, if you just played 3-3 three, three by itself, it would just die. It, so... That's why people don't play that sort of crazy stuff. Alright, so now do I just connect? Or do I play B18 or A18? I think if I do A18, he does C18, I do B18, and I just... Um, well that doesn't die. There's gotta be some variation there where I get completely surrounded though. Well, this would be Atari, so he'd be forced to reply, and then I'd have to play sooner or later. I'd have to play something uh, to connect my stones. Maybe not immediately, but... Well... So if I play this... I just don't know. First line moves tend to suck. Just for so many reasons. But here, he played a first line move, so it's okay for me to play one. Um, and then he plays one in response, and I just play h17, and I'm okay. He doesn't have any way to kill this, as far as I can see. I mean, it's a tense position, but I don't think he gained much by giving up a turn, essentially. Unless, I don't know, is he going to play somewhere else down here and just ignore the Atari? Okay, that's a counter Atari. I just thought I would kill this. Um, apparently, then he just plays there. And it's pretty clear who's getting killed. Um, it's not me. Or it's not him. Uh, okay. Whatever. I tried. So I should do a five space extension. I don't know. Something like that. Um, I could enclose my other corner. I can close it this way. I don't know. If I play here, he probably just play, plays out in this vicinity. Whatever. I think that this is reasonable. Okay, so he's preventing me from, like, connecting. In case I wanted to save the stone. Um, I don't know. So he's playing the top, or this side of the board. I could play the other side. 
Okay. He's playing a lot of stones over there suddenly. Um, how urgent is all of this? feels urgent, so we'll do this, and that actually didn't help me very much, now did it? Um, how urgent is this? I can't tell. I could fix the defect so he doesn't Atari me. That probably looks reasonable. Saving this stone is probably unlikely. I mean, there might be some circumstance where I've built up enough um, stones in this vicinity where suddenly it makes sense to save it. But in this condition, there's no point. ways for me to divide this corner. Maybe there aren't. Like there we got our top hat thing that I generally want to avoid, but um, I've got enough space that it doesn't matter. Like if I play this, I'm threatening to go there making two eyes. If I go here directly, he goes here, so... If I go here, though, he might go 2-2. Two, two. Um... Hmm. Alright, let me think about this. I want to play 2-2. Two, two. Although, then he goes 2-1 there, like he pushes, I don't know if push is the right term for that, but we go 2-2, two, two, he goes here, I take the corner, oh wait, that's self-Atari. Um, I feel that I should solidify this edge and then play here next. I'm concerned that if I do this, he plays on 2-2. Two, two. I take this, and he connects, and I can't make a second eye. Um, if I play 2-2, two, two, he plays this 4-1 point. Oh, that's fine, though. No, he doesn't. So I, I do 2-2, two, two, he, he has to go here. Then I play 4-1, he has to go there. And I'm dead. Um, so, <sighs> how do I read this? I'm trying to partition that space. He's doing a pretty effective job at not letting me partition it. If I go 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, one, one, two, one, one. Yeah, even if I kill this, there's not time for me to go in and make two eyes out of it. If I go 1-2, let um, me just place 2-2, two, two, and I play here, he kills me. Atari, he connects, I kill the top hat, he plays the center of the top hat, and then I play 4-1. So, because I have 4-1 and I have this 2-1 here, um, that makes a second eye. Did 
Did I read this right? I go here. Atari, Atari, kill, Atari, connect? I don't know if he connects. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he connects down here. Uh, and then I Atari again. Um, and I'm not sure. Um, what if I approach this way? Atari. That's not Atari. Uh, I just feel this is too slow. So I want to hit approach on one of these two points. I think this is the only reasonable try. And I think I'm okay against it. So this is Atari. This is Atari. And I'm concerned about this connection down here. This is living very small, if it's living. Um, maybe he has to play 4-1. I don't know. I think either way, I need some water. Uh, so let me go refill this. Okay, so he does connect there, and then I kill all this. He plays at that point. Um, I try to make a second eye now. Or do I have to play 2-2? Two, two? And he gets 4-1. I think I have to try this. Now he has 2-2. Two, two. Oh, this ends up being the one variation where that stone's actually useful. <laughs> Is, doesn't it? Because um, if he plays 2-2, two, two, now I play 5-1. No, then we just like build this tunnel that goes the entire length of the board, which doesn't give me any extra liberties. Okay. But yeah, this makes two true eyes here, so I live. Um, that's a sad way to live, but I'll take it. But yeah, there's some variation where I'm able to um, try to cut him both on F2 and on E1 because I have the stone here. Um, so that stone actually did a good job. Well done, stone. Alright, I guess we make a 5 space extension. It seems to be a popular thing to do. I was already alive. Groovy. Oh, you're saying I didn't have to play 2-2. Two, two. Oh. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Sorry, I was just excited about not dying horribly. Now we play Tengen. No. Um. I don't know. Now we, like, connect like this, I guess? Uh, I 
I don't know, play a third line move, maybe. Just vary it up a little bit. Tengen doesn't look terrible. You gotta be honest here. There's so many other things going on here that, um, Tengen's like, you know, I've already gotten this right edge of the board, so let me build out my influence a little bit in a different way. He's playing a lot of really low... Oh, I mean, these these moves on the fifth line aren't that low. Um, but since he's playing so many moves close to the edge, uh, this is actually not terrible. Okay, we got... Oh, this is an interesting idea, too. F14. So, yeah, this way white doesn't play F14. Or F17. Somewhere around here. Um, interesting. I like this. Sorry to steal ideas. Um, and then we could play F10 next, right? <laughs> Just really make this confusing. Okay, he's not going to let that happen. I mean, we could play it anyway, but um, it seems unwise. Okay. Okay. And then we play F10. No. F10 seems like ludicrous. It would let him to he would let him cut through my beautiful everything. This looks okay. This looks fine. Tengen looks okay. Yeah, I don't, I just don't this is a really weird shape. I don't know what to do about this. Let's play over there. Just make it really confusing. I mean, there's some merit to this, but it looks insane. White just kills it. Um, J14. Oh, so not right next to it, but like, you have these knights move thing connecting. Why not like H15, I wonder? Well, this is too passive. Yeah, this looks more reasonable. Holding my shape together-ish. And I assume now I want to, Hane. He's gonna cross cut. I'm gonna die. Maybe I push. Maybe push and then Hane. I don't know. I mean, okay, if he kills a stone, do I care? Probably not. Oh, it's really small and there's no need to respond. I'm, I'm just concerned that, like, my stones in the corner die. You'll have to forgive me for, like, not completely neglecting them. Although, h is a better way to, like, save them and stuff. I'm just afraid of some trick move showing up somewhere in this vicinity, and who knows what happens. Um. Alright, so now do we play Tengen? I mean, he just hit our stone. Do we, like, connect somehow? Do we... This is insane. You don't play this sort of... I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you're forced to, but... Ten, nine, eight, seven, I don't six, know. Five, it's all confusing to me. Three, two, one. Um... Fine. I say. Okay, this is weird.
Ah, that's a misclick. Ah, just such a misclick. Now I die. Not really, but mostly. Misclicking was a bad strategy. <laughs> okay, well, this doesn't even increase the liberty count, now does it? Um. I mean, this increases my liberty count. Oh, I see. This is how you make a net. I knew that. I'm good at Go. If I just keep telling myself that, I might eventually believe it. Ten, Why did I do that? <laughs> okay. We'll make an eye shape here somehow. Uh, somehow we'll live. It will be sad. It will give all the influence in the world. But we might live. Maybe. No, I'm actually alive. Just kidding. But, um... Wait, is this not two eyes? <sighs> Why is Go so difficult? I missed the, the obvious move. Um, okay, so we lose like all the stones and all the space. Ten, nine, but it's okay. Never fear. Um, somehow it'll work out. Yeah, yeah. I'm more used to seeing a bulky five in a corner, to be honest. He's got two liberties, guys. That's Atari. Um, we're going to die trying to save the center group. It's going to be glorious. All our stones will die. But, you know, I'm down like 11 minutes and have no idea what I'm doing. And want to see how this works. Probably should have started with that. Also, if I keep playing like this, he might make errors if I'm playing quickly. So, um... Oh! He just caps it. He missed the cap. So we run. 
Um, no shame. No shame at all. I'd offer a draw if I could. That's the extent to which I feel ashamed of this. Um, yeah, so basically I should not have tried to run the way I ran. Um, but he missed the, the way to cap that, so... Wait. If he would have capped this properly, then I run, um, he caps it again, I run again, caps here, I don't know. Something happens. Okay. Do we hit this directly? Do we just, like, play an influential move? I can't tell how urgent anything is anymore. And I I maintain and contend that it's very shameful. <laughs> um, you will disagree. We will have to agree to disagree on that because I cannot be persuaded otherwise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, he could have played it better. Even beyond just the simple misread, it, it felt not as convincing as it should have been. Um, all right, so that's my side. Um, I'm going to play another fourth line stone. Five equidistant fourth line stones. Feels really weird. Um, Crosscut is not wise. Uh... Counter honey seems not so wise either. Um... Or at least this is slow. sure what to make of that. Feels like I have to play this. Alright, now he's threatening to connect, so we're, we've had enough of that. Um... I don't get to connect. Do oh, apparently I do. Okay, I'll connect. Um Do I have any defects in my structure here? Um Nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
I'm going to risk this cut. I think I'm okay against it. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot. Uh, there's a corner here. Um... Oh, don't worry, I'll find a different way to lose. Is that okay? I feel like this is not the right way to approach uh, the situation, but... Oh, that's clever. Oh. Oh, wow. So... Yeah, no, he's fine here, though. This move is actually for naught, but... Um, I wasn't sure what else to try. Maybe just K-18. It's just too greedy. Um... I'm just not seeing at all how to approach that. Um. So, I maybe make two eyes, maybe, hopefully. It'd be sad if this thing couldn't make two eyes. Double Atari. Just making things interesting. Uh, can I connect this? 
I can try. <laughs> um. Alright, so that's Atari. That's actually a really smart Atari for so many reasons. Um, yeah, I found a good move. I can occasionally do that. So, is there anything else? I feel like I'm missing something here. Um, I should steal this corner. This corner is kind of important. Enormous. Um, so anything I can take would be great. Ten. Of course, now I've woken the sleeping bear, but oh well, what you gonna do? That's a very strange move. Um, I mean, I guess he's trying to connect or something, but... Um, there's kind of a defect with this approach. That's Atari. So, yeah, I think that's maybe asking for too much. Um, so he has to do something to defend this stuff. Or not. Um, okay. That's Atari, better respond to it. Okay, so now what? Just push through? Just keep killing stuff? Okay... Looks like he got that stone after all, guys. Is there an Atari that he's threatening here somewhere? Not that I see. So Atarium, he's got to play there. I've got Sente, and... Um, wouldn't it be great if I killed this thing? This monster. It's not happening, but one can dream. So if I'm careless, he just cuts me here, right? So I think I protect that. Yeah, my two stones here are going to kill everything in this whole vicinity. 
It's going to be glorious. Unless he actually defends against it, you know, which he'll probably do. Um... Yeah, E-Nice is a nice resource to have at our disposal. Um, oh, that's not Atari. That's not Self-Atari. All right, we'll make some subtle... Okay, he got it. He figured it out, guys. He saw the subtle threat, which wasn't that subtle. Um, so now what? Now what indeed? Um... Yeah, he does have this cut I have to worry about. Um... I feel like I should connect here. Or somewhere in this vicinity. I guess I go for the subtle threat. The ever so incredibly subtle threat. Ten, nine, um. Seven, six, five, four, three, let's start here. Oh, okay. We want to pass. Yeah, let's just score this. Okay, fine. Whatever. White wins. <sighs> Thanks for the game. Um, so White wins this. I guess that is a lot of territory. Yeah, that's uh, not terrible. Well, I mean, White did win by 13 and a half, so he won by Comey plus 6. Um, managed to play a game without a handicap, so that happened. Um, it's a variation. You live. Oh, yes, playing at the vital point would have lived. It's kind of the definition of a vital point, but it's still good to point out. Um, so, yeah. White just played better. Um, and I was proud of having killed the thing. But, um, 
Yeah, this is a really sad life in the lower left corner. That's very sad down there. And <clears throat> um, having lost the upper right corner probably wasn't that great either. So out of the two corners, uh, wait, no, I started with the upper right and lower right corners. And I invaded the lower left, and that went badly. I played an extra stone there at B2 that I didn't need to play, so that's one territory plus Sente that I gave up. Um, they say Sente's worth five, so whatever. Um, M10's interesting. I actually like the idea much earlier in the game of just playing the Tengen point. I think that could have been fun. Uh, all right, so by the way, this was oh, okay, that's good to know. That seems a lot safer. Right, I think Nick Sabicki once had a lecture or something, and so yeah, this is the continuation. And then Black can do that and gets all kinds of. I mean, it's just good. I've seen this, like, many months ago once. Uh, yeah, if they descend, you just cut. Um, and you've got this local stone, so it's okay. Like, you're not losing your cutting stone. Or at least if you do lose it, it's not for naught. Like, if this were a white stone back here, this probably wouldn't work so well. Um, and then you build the Great Wall. No, that's not a good idea. But, um, yeah, that cutting stone can live. Uh, at least long enough for you to question what white's doing. So. Um... Yeah, it's hard to do some things with uh, chat delay. Oh, if he does C6, the three stones die. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, this is like, well, I don't need to give everything a chess analogy. Uh, yeah, I mean, surely this is the move, and... The white three stones just have no room whatsoever to live. It's like not even a question at this point. Um, I mean, if he's trying to live, this would be a better attempt. Um, something like that. And sure, white lives, but black's cool there. Um. Yeah, so that that doesn't look so good for white. Oh, we got C6 also. So I don't even have to go that way, I could just go C6. Um. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, both ways look fine. Let's see, yeah, white playing locally is just completely outnumbered there. You have five stones to white's four. Any fight he picks, he's going to lose. Um, he might have fun, like, connecting on top of your stone, but um, again, you got C6. So, um, it's not so great for white. I mean, okay, you build something on the outside, whatever. He's given up um, stones and given up the corner to get influence. Which is okay. You could also connect underneath whatever. You still have C6. 
he could just play this, and then your c6 doesn't crush him. But um, black's doing okay here. That's the point. Um, so yeah, white isn't going to descend into this fight, which he would lose. Um, so yeah, this is the way to go. It's just solid. I guess since I have more stones there locally, I don't need to be looking to pick a fight. Um, I mean, there's no benefit to picking the fight there. Because um, all of that can happen is just me losing territory. Okay, white should instead of... <clears throat> instead of a Hane, white should just play d5. And I think we were supposed to do this to attempt to connect or something. and Something like this is supposed to happen, I think. Well, with this particular setup, um, it's pretty complicated anyway. I mean, there's fun stuff all over the place. Um, read the Joseki at your own fun. But yeah, basic point is that black's fine. Oh, so variation. Oh, we jump again. So white connects and then we jump. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, because just taking the corner is not that big anymore. I think corners are nice to have. But white's building up a lot of fun influence and strength, so... Um, jumping seems reasonable. I'm always afraid to jump, because, like, you always have these cuts, but it's, this is fine. And just build out the wall to infinity. Black's not dying. That's the point. Oh, okay. This also prevents you from getting surrounded. Whereas if you were to just, like, keep building, maybe this isn't so great. Um. Yeah. Well, forgive me for being, like, the beginner here. <laughs> but, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, white would not want to push from behind. Oh, we want to go back and actually look at this kill stuff. Is that so? Um. Oh, maybe, maybe you mean this. I don't know. This, I can find this on the Josekipedia, and I'm not going to remember it anyway. There's just tons of variations, but... Learning some of the more basic ones, like this is being okay. And figuring out the details later would be okay, but... Um, what was White's response to something? Sorry about the delay. There's all kinds of things that can be played here. White, Hani, it's C5. Oh, black, it's C2. So the thing that happened in the game. Um, yeah, I missed... Uh, or white must have... Something must have happened here that shouldn't have happened. Because um, it felt like this... White had to connect there. But, I don't know. Huh. So. Okay, we have the Hane extend white. Oh, white pushing on C2. 
or D2? Okay, this is interesting. So if white, instead of trying to cut the cutting stone, um, if he tries to surround like this, I'm sorry, this cutting stone's not there yet. Yeah, if he tries to surround, then you play the cut, like you were saying. Um, and if he tries to push instead of killing the stone, um, you push again. not five. So if you put five on e4, this just kills white. I mean, yeah, that's not surprising. But it's good to see. Oh, but the push also works. We're hearing. You know, if it works, that seems like a better play. I don't know if it works. Like, I'm not sure. This is nice for black, I believe. I always wondered, though, like, we have these... What if you end up in this kind of situation? Um, where white just has two stones and no eye. Is white, in general, supposed to, like, cross-cut that? I wonder. It's like, six is not the most urgent thing. If you ever ended up in that situation where you got um, a Hane at, at the head and another stone at the tail, what are you general supposed to do on the third line there? Wow, that's quite a shape. <laughs> I mean, cool. How'd we get here? So white tries to live, you kill white, he does the Atari, and you get the snap back. Interesting. But yeah, it's not like white's going to place in the middle of that. Um, I mean, it's not like an Atari you here or Atari you there, because those would be self Atari. So, it doesn't matter that there's so many defects, because there's no way for White to even approach this. Like, if he tries hitting this or something, you can just. That looks reasonable. Um, don't know that you even have to do that, because. I mean, this is probably even better. And if white tries to kill, you just kill white. So. Move 9 is the one to look for. Yeah, 9 here. I mean, you're kind of forced to find it. Um, you don't have much of a choice. Especially because 8 was right there. You can't find nine. I don't know. You could be more greedy. Like, try to include eight inside the stuff that's being killed. Um, I get the sense that that's not a very wise approach. Um, so I threatens to Atari. You Atari in return. He Ataris you back. Shia LaBeouf. No. Alright, so. Yeah, 9 is perfectly good. Alright, there's a variation starting C5. Um, C2. Oh, it's so starting differently. C5, C2. White C5. And then black C2. Oh, sorry, there's the C5. Let me go back. White did play C5. Black at C2. 
white d2, black d5, b5, oh, so we're saying 4b5. Uh, e4, f2, that's not f, is it? F2's, there's f2, e2, oh, well, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and then eventually, somehow, that turns out to be in Black's favor. This is what happens when you invade. You get interesting variations where, like, players can gain or lose several stones in a single move. It's not the most beginner-friendly stuff, but it's t theoretical, it's topical. Anyhow, let's play some 9x9, nine nine, and then maybe do something else. <laughs> um, oh, wait, what? This is a multi-select control. That's weird. So I could say, like, yeah, I'll play anything, or if you disable your selection, it gives you 19 by 19 you can't disable 19 by 19 but if you select 9 by 9 then you can disable 19 by 19 or light it back up or disable it again oh this shows you like if I, there's like dark this black to indicate nobody's seeking that i guess or nobody you're qualified to play against is seeking that <clears throat> that's an interesting control all right <clears throat> 9 by 9 please tell me handicap is off Oh, you can actually configure per blitz, normal, and correspondence different handicap rules. You know, you have that kind of flexibility. All right, we're playing a 19Q. So I hear that in 9x9, nine nine, white's supposed to form like one or two living groups and then be happy. Hi, good luck, etc. Um... Three three. Not confusing at all. All right. Um. Sure, maybe. I don't know. He's got to play e four, I think. And he does. But I think White's okay. I think white's fine. The loss ranked me up. I'm not sure. I think I have different rankings for different board sizes. Oh, this is urgent. I should do something about that. All right, he's committed to killing this stone, but it's a useful stone to keep, so we'll keep it. All right, he connects. Um, so we do this. Um, we can force him to connect again. I should declare my territory somewhere. Oh, that's interesting. Um, he's trying to Atari me, but I can return the favor? I don't know if that's a good idea. This gives me some... Like, otherwise I'm getting pocketed or netted in the middle of the board. On the other hand, I do want to kill this. And so if he tries to approach me this way, maybe I just push left. I don't know. This is weird. What if I do this first and then kill the thing in the middle? 
Um, Okay, and we get to Atarium again. Okay, where's my... How do I play this? I feel like my strength is around here somewhere. So I should play G8 and collect these couple stones. I go there, he plays h8, I play here. So I've, I go here, he has to go h5. Um, what if I just go h5 directly? He goes there, and then I have... Oh, I have fewer liberties. I have a liberty shortage there. So H5 is forced, and then he's got two liberties. I've got three. Um, but isn't that the same idea here? I've got three liberties, he's got two. I got confused, because this felt too slow. So this is Atari. I don't see any harm with doing that, because I still have three liberties here. Um, there might be harm. Feels wrong. I'm sure no matter what I do here, I'm doing great. Keeps me at three liberties, cuts him down to two. But then he reduces this to. Yeah. My liberty count is suffering a bit. I go here. He goes h5. Yeah, H5 is better. This, I think, is okay, though. Since I still have three liberties, I can still kill this little group and still have a small life here. Um, yeah, H5 is the better way to go about all this. Oh, right, 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 right. So he gets to kill that stone. Why not h5? Because, I mean, he kills my corner. But this way he kills my center. Um, yeah, this is bad. Because now if I try to kill this, he just goes there. It's Atari. And just Atari's me to death. Right? Because there's got to be a ladder here somewhere. Like if I go there, he, Atari. Push out. Um, Atari. Push, Atari, push, Atari, 
push Atari and I'm dead. So I have to push out this way. And now my everything dies. Um, H5 would have worked. Wait, but he doesn't kill my corner. I'm guessing I have like F9 or some miracle resource there somewhere. I have to keep pushing. No choice. Okay, we'll push this way. That's a strange move. Um, or I should say a confident move. Atari you. It's a very confident move. Oh man, I had like F9 there too. I have all kinds of stuff I could... Play. Well, F9 doesn't win, but... Um... One, two, three. One, two liberties, so I better do something about my liberty issue. Ten, oh, J6 would have been a nice throw in, and then J8 is just crushing. That's a good point. So now he has to connect here at F2. Plus, there's no surrounding my big pocket. Um, my pocket lives. Okay. Atari. This is the difference between two double-digit Q players here, is that occasionally I spot the Atari. Um, although I did read out that one variation where my pocket died, so I did do that right. Um, Only because I think I could kill this stuff. Um, is this another example of a throw in? Uh, J2, H1. No, he makes two eyes though if I do that. So I'm going to put J1 first. And then kill everything. J1 prevents two eyes, right? Well, I mean, he doesn't even have space for one eye. But unless I'm just stupid. Um, which could happen. Like, if I go G1 and the H1, well, I don't know. 
If I go here first, that's self Atari. Probably not wise. Yeah, this is self Atari. Probably not the greatest move in the world. Um. I've got a liberty issue there, for sure. Alright, so we'll try to kill the lower right. Or if we can't kill it, just reduce it. Yeah, I think h9 was a good move to kill my corner, because I can't make two eyes now. So he slowly moves in on that. Um, he has done some things right. Yeah, this is the way that I approach all this. I'm not sure how to follow up, but... Um, one, two... Yeah, I think this is barely fast enough that I win this race. Oh, wait. I have to play, like, something out here now. Or this, um, and then two and three. One, one, two, two. Oh, he kills me if I do that. That's... okay. Maybe that was forced. I don't know. It's curious, for sure. Alright, so now I connect and then move into the corner. Wait, do I connect here? If I do, he has to kill this first before approaching. If I do this, um... He kills my stone. And I play H1. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, two. Oh, the middle's an Atari, so if he played E2, I would have had it. Okay, so E2 was unnecessary. Um, yeah, we won a game. That was exciting. Um, yeah, H5 crushes. <laughs> no intuition here. I mean, I saw H5 as a candidate move. No reading ability, we'll say. I barely dodged my center pocket thing getting killed. I was probably lost at one point. Yeah, that was, that was a good game, I think. F1 was necessary because there was no other way to approach this. Like, I tried reading out the other stuff and it didn't work. So I found F1 and I'm like, you know, if there's something here, it's gotta be that. Right, yeah. I'm sorry, I meant that by G1, but F1 was necessary. Because this is self-Atari, and then you have to repeat the whole sequence, and that's really slow, so F1's necessary. Uh, point is, if E2, I have this. Um, giving my bottom group this liberty, because I have this stone over here. Um, it Somehow this felt very wrong that E2 had to be necessary here. But I couldn't figure out that E2 was countered by a move way on the other side of the board, basically. Like, so I played this, it wasn't necessary to play it. But, um, J7 was nice. Oh, it was in fact necessary, because otherwise he lives. Um, so it's a good thing I took my time to find J7 there. Man. 
All right, what are our other variations we're looking at? I guess, to, oh, these are just comments. Yeah. Um, yeah, just do the same thing on a night. Why stop at 19 by 19? Do five move reading uh, like nine million by nine million board. Just read ahead five moves. You know, it's the same thing as on the nine by nine board. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was a thing. Um, I'm not in the best position to educate my fellow opponent. Um, but yeah, this, uh, I think that you commented later in the game, this would have been nice, like here, probably even right here, to be honest. Um, how does this go? Oh. Oh. Wait, how... How is this working? Oh, I guess what makes this work is that he doesn't... That I have three liberties and he has two. I'm like, this is the same shape. An empty triangle versus an empty triangle, but... I'm one tempo ahead. Uh... Okay. Yeah. No, this this is very surprising to me that white is winning that. Because it's the same shape, but um, white has one additional liberty. So it's like the most trivial liberty race in the world, and I couldn't read it. Yeah. <laughs> Empty triangles are bad. I just couldn't figure out. Like, there's so many black stones. He's got an empty triangle here, an empty triangle there. I've got an empty triangle. But he's got like six stones to my three. And yet I'm winning this, because I've got this outside influence and a space edge. This, this is weird. It's really strange to me that three stones could beat six. Although it's not really three versus six, if you count these other two out here. It's more like five on six. Uh, if this were connected by a black stone, it'd be a very different situation, of course. Oh, they're not empty. Okay. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, by empty we mean, like, the point... By empty we mean something more like, um where the vital point uh, hasn't been, like, occupied. That's an empty triangle. Um, so these aren't empty. These are just triangles. Okay. So, whatever. Uh, I won that, so something positive must have happened that game. I misread H5 because, I don't know, I was just overwhelmed by looking at all these black stones and just these two white stones sitting by themselves. So I'm like, you know, if I push him this way, only bad things can happen. And then I'm making a triangle, but it's not an empty triangle. So... It's not the worst shape ever. And tactically, I'm just... A, I have one more liberty than he does, so... It's not even close. Um, so that's cool. Um, yeah. Let's play one more 9x9. Nine nine. Sorry, now I'm a little bit hooked on it. Oh, hey, look, there's a guy playing on the Ancient Go Steam Client. Uh, using American rules. Go America. 
There's a lot of games going on. Let's see. So yeah, most of these are not handicap games. Um, so let me try to decide what to do next. Because Go is pretty hard. Ooh, you can sell E3 digital tickets. How about that? <laughs> what what does this even have to do with E3? Yeah. Yeah, that's so weird. These deals that they have are the craziest things. It is interesting though, like I see like there's this humble bundle E3 deal ticket thing, whatever. And apparently I could um, somehow make it possible for you guys to see that this deal is out there. It just occurs to me like, you have two institutions that would never, ever get together on their own. And then Twitch is trying to tell you, like, sure. Um, yeah, we can, we're can. we doing this promotion where we're promoting two other institutions. and It's just the weirdest deal I've ever seen. It's like if you were to go to the shoe store and order a hamburger or something. Um... Some of these deals that they have uh, on Twitch are just weird. So they're saying that I could go enable this button on my stream to advertise for this event. Um, you know, in case people wanted to purchase things from the Humble Bundle that um, were, I don't know, in some way being able to view what's going on at E3. I like. Has E3 ever been that exciting? Years ago, yes, but these days it's different. Anyway, I guess I've accidentally advertised the event, but... Yeah, well... Car cinemas, I guess at one point, like if they were, they were talking about like an outdoor cinema thing, I guess... It, it's weird to me that people would want to do that instead of going to a proper theater, but to each their own. But yeah, the Humble Bundle generally sells products that are more tangible. Yeah, it still exists. It's out there now to reach out to corporations, you know, so. Because that's the target audience, um, it's no fun anymore. And, yeah, we don't watch it. Um, but yeah, Twitch is trying to say, if you wanted to, you could put this button that sells things through the Humble Bundle and gives you some credit. And I'm like, yeah, but it's E3. Who would want to do that? Yeah, is coming up. Um, I wonder what they'll be what's in the schedule. Um, occasionally they have interesting games. What I guess I like most about some of the AGDQ stuff would be the races they put on. In particular, the Donkey Kong races are pretty entertaining, but the rest of it, eh, who knows. Well, it seems like I'm not getting my 9x9 game out here. Um, not sure how to get one. Maybe I should seek a correspondence 9x9 game. Oh, I think they also had like a... It wasn't Tetris. It wasn't Tetris Attack. It was like the Pokemon Tetris Attack thing. They had some race going on, which is crazy to me. Um... I forget what else they had. Like, 
Metroid is clever because um, it's not always the same route every time. You have to figure things out on the run. Um, it's just sad seeing people like execute the same sequence of buttons that they do every single time. So seeing things where people have to improvise on the fly, and I don't know, I find that really interesting. Uh, I think at one point uh, there's a streamer who does the game faster than light uh, by the name of Dark Twinge. I think he's raced it, or I'm sorry, not raced it, but run it at least once or twice in GDQs. Um, it's amazing because, okay, yeah, he does manage to um, execute the battles pretty quickly, but figuring out, like, what, how to balance your weapons, um, your shields, all the various tech upgrades, the things you could purchase at stores, making blink of an eye decisions about what to buy and sell there. Uh, yeah, Dark Twinge, I say. Indeed. You've heard of him. <laughs> He's pretty good. Um, what gets me, what I find also funny is when sometimes when they're just more casually playing and not running or racing or speed running or whatever you want to call that um, they some of the opposing ships have like so many shields and so many defenses that you can't destroy them you just have to jump away you have to like wait a minute or two or five so you just, I've seen people like put up minesweeper uh, on top of the opposing ship just like while they're waiting to jump because they encounter an enemy ship that just is going to suck all their time and they just put up Minesweeper um, because those ships can't hurt you but they have too many shields and you can't hurt them so it's just an impasse um, oh, I could watch the Final Fantasy runs I guess yeah there are some random drops there so um I kind of wish um, Mario RPG were more balanced like that. Anyway, it looks like yeah, 7 minutes 30, 7 minutes 40 something passed. I didn't get a game. Um, Alright, here's a guy. Oh, there goes the Seek. Whatever. Looks like we're not getting our 9x9 in. That's too bad. I could at least adjust some of the settings. Like, I could say Blitz... Minus five to plus five. Nope. Require that there's no handicap. I don't care what the time control is. I don't care what the rules are. We'll see if anybody wants to play Blitz 9 by 9 Um, all right, so Tengen, here we go. Up, oh, we're dead. We're so dead. Um, okay. I plays like C3 or something, right? What's this? I'm so confused. Okay. Well, color me confused. Um. I mean, this isn't bad. This responds to the Atari threat. Ten, this also responds. Nine. 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 Nine.
I think I'm good here. I'm pretty sure I'm doing okay in this position. Looks good to me. Black wins. All right. Well, that was exciting. Apparently, I'm good at um, blitz, or my opponent just isn't. Um, yeah, DK runs are pretty cool. So, um, I. I suppose there would be criticisms of this, um, of the way I played it somehow. Anybody can criticize a 9x9 game. Um, obviously, I found many opportunities to get many stones and territory. Obviously, this game is kind of lopsided, um, just in the way it played out. But that doesn't mean I play perfectly. It just means that I outplayed my opponent here. Um, so yeah, I shouldn't be of a mentality that like I played perfectly throughout. Although I think I did okay. And it's difficult not to be excited about um, how this played. Uh, how do I attempt to analyze this? So, this, um, yeah, I mean, this is fine, I suppose. I don't know. There's a lot of things that can be criticized in 9x9. Yeah. Uh, I don't think d6 was at all a reasonable try here. Um... It certainly didn't work out in the game, but even more broadly, well, yeah. I was expecting white would like jump out here or out here or something. Um, but I built up this really thick shape in the center. Um, I'm thinking white probably should have just played like F4 here instead of the Hane. Um, Oh, you would have just laddered instead of the net. Um, oh. Yeah, I guess I got a ladder here, don't I? So that's even more forcing. Um, if I read it right. Definitely there's potential for a ladder here. So, is this actually... I mean, each of these is Atari. You can't break out. Um, yeah, that's a classic ladder. So that would have worked better than the net. Um, and kept me connected. But it didn't matter in this position. But okay, this is slow. Um... Yeah, so if I go for the ladder, he just has to say, okay, whatever, he lost his stones, and ultimately, I mean, it should probably be the same response regardless. Oh, wait, no. Uh, you have to go like this here. Um, which makes me wonder, if I ladder and he does this, I still push here? Yes. But no, this is Atari. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're both good. Yeah, either way, White ends up playing a d8 or c7. So, this happened. 
Well, I, I tried to save the stone. At least, like, desperately trying to connect underneath. Uh, which is weird. Um, I don't know. Maybe this is worth trying. Maybe this. Either way, White doesn't. White misplayed the opening, and the rest just followed. Um, as White tried to play more and more desperate plays here. So I captured. What about this? This is Atari. I have to take. Oh, he can't. Um, yeah, he can't do that. C8 is on the wrong side. Okay, yeah, he should be building up this side here. Um, and this demonstrates why the ladder is more effective, because now either I have to do this and get all kinds of messy stuff, or we go back to the ladder, except now I've played two stones to do it. Uh, so, yeah, that, that should have... Wait, I don't know. Something happened in that opening. Um, C9 was unnecessary. C9, yeah. I'm not sure there's much else to look at. Um, uh, White was trying to do something. Um, if I push him once on C5, I can make the ladder safer. Okay, yeah, I was wondering about this, actually. Um, yeah, it's a safer and more profitable ladder. Um, well, let's see. Hang on. We don't play first line moves. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, the first line move just causes a defect that we might have to repair later. In this case, it might not matter, but I wonder what the pros and cons are of um, the second line versus the first line move. I guess in either case, I still have defects elsewhere like this. Uh, she takes there and then starts running this way, and well, it doesn't get very far. Um, but yeah, in general, if I do this, he might try something like that. And okay, yes, I pocket this. But he still doesn't get away. Um, yeah, it's not a big difference. The difference is that you just don't want to get laddered anyway. Getting ladder is bad. Like, once you figure out that you're ladder, just give up on it. Or just try to sacrifice your stones to get something. Um, get something out of this. Or if I cut in between, do this. Yeah, so if I want something less ambitious and more safe, that C5 is the way to go about it. That's good resource in case sometimes I might have to make a safer ladder. Um, that was exciting. That all right? Let's see how it goes when we're playing uh, as the White Stones. Hi. Okay, so. Let's take a stone here. Sorry. Got caught up in playing the 9x9 blitz stuff. Well, it maxes out at 30 seconds, but you start at 10. I see. Okay. What's the plan? Is Black just having fun here?
Oh, this is going to be a weird blitz game. Um, I think I'm getting cut. To overstate the obvious. My left group is just too disconnected. You can't live. Oh, well now it might be able to. No, now de definitely it lives. Um, so, that's unfortunate for black. Okay. Um, deal with the Atari. I don't even have to capture it to deal with that. That's threatening to Atari. Um, decisions, decisions. Okay, so Atari down here. Connect. I get the sense that I'm kind of winning this. Although black has tons of territory, and I haven't really solidified my territory, so... Yeah, who knows? Um... Okay, so I have to kill this now. Atari. <clears throat> well, black is invaded. Um, I need to pick a side of the board. I guess so. Um, if he gives me time, I'll certainly start playing on that side. Because there is plenty of territory to be taken. Maybe there is even profit to be turned here somehow. <clears throat> um... So the idea is h7, um, but I think he plays h7. So many first line moves. Wait. Oh, that's Atari. Um, it's a useful cut, so we'll keep it. So, yeah, this is not turning out as well as it could. Although it looks like he has one big eye. 
Um, so this might still be okay. I might be killing the entire right side. Um, I tarry you. Um. Oh, this is. We'd end up with a bulky five. Um. So, okay, that's like Seki. You can't kill me. I can't kill. Well. Yeah, you can't kill my two stones. Oh, black is dead. That's strange to me. Ten, nine. I don't see how to kill that monster. <laughs> oh, dear. Um... I don't understand this at all. I'm more than willing to accept it, but... Um... Uh, we'll continue the game. Uh, pass and win. I think I tricked him. Uh, so, thanks for the game. Wait, he had no way to live. What? What are you talking about? Uh, doo, doo, doo. So, what are you talking about, though? Uh, I don't understand. So, if I play this, pass. I play this, pass. Now what? Oh, now we end up with bulky five. Okay. I get it. Okay, so... Uh... No, that's my apology, cause like... Whatever. Um... I'm going to assume that I needed to kill all that to win this. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, now that's my apology there, because I didn't... I thought I was confused. Like, so apparently this double top hat thing uh, is not a living shape, because it reduces to bulky 5. And then from bulky 5, the, then to the single top hat, and then so on and so forth, so... Yeah, I... Um... So... Um, I'm sure at some point, between the beginning of the game and the end of the game, I was not winning this. Um... Oh, he's not even threatening F8. Well, yeah, I'm just being silly. I should just do this. And who knows where we end up here. Different game, but F8 was completely unnecessary. <laughs> In a big game that's like 15 co-threats. Um, or, I'm sorry, you're saying like you have a 15 co-threat in a big game. Man, that's a pity that it came down to this. Um, so, here comes the question. At what point was Black dead? This is just, like, not an important question here. But, I don't know. Like, he's got to make two eyes somehow, right? If he could just, like, surround this stick on both sides, he'd have two eyes. We played... Oh, J4 instead of J5. Okay. Yeah. Was it J8? Is that the responsible move for Black's Demise? Or was there something more to this? Wait, no, black could just play here, right? And... Yeah, there's no way that white deserves this. Um, black lives. Just wait. Somehow. It's gotta be alive. Oh, he could try a second eye in the corner. Okay, there's a thought. Um, that's tricky to manage, but a thought. Like, if he could just push all the way through on the top, then he's good. Um... Oh, this corner. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Just try to live down here. Um, it's worth a shot, for sure. Not that he even should play the stone there, but that's the corner in question. Uh, yeah, I'm sure black has space now. and that white attempts to be greedy are swiftly punished. Uh, so, yeah. Oops, we still get this, we still get the two in the corner, but it's not the same as killing the entire invasion. Um, that's what happened in the game. Wait, this is part of the game? Okay. Um, yeah, Black just misplayed this. Black's totally fine here. Black reacted in the way I might react, so... Ah, that's quite a game. Even did this H7, which looked reasonable, but it probably was reasonable. Alright, thanks for stopping by. Man, this blitz against double-digit cues 
leads to a lot of mistakes. It's addicting, though. Um... So, yeah, apparently I've been doing enough Sume Go that I'm decent at this Blitz thing. <laughs> Just, I don't know. I'm sure if I get paired up, I get, like, obliterated at Blitz. But getting paired down, it's, it's okay. Um... I mean, I know there's a saying that you want to get through your first 100 or 1,000 or whatever losses, 100 games as quickly as possible, just to get some basic exposure to the game. But I don't think Blitz is what they had in mind when, they, when that saying was originated. Hmm. Also, perhaps, maybe, I should just move on to um, another game at this point. Because these Blitz games are pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, I guess if that's okay with people, we might play um, some more Go in the future, but... Yeah. Okay, even Blitz is fine, as long as you review and learn something from it. It's not like chess people who constantly just play games and never review them. Um, Blitz is great? Huh, did not know that. It seems like it would be just too stressful for a person to actually learn anything. Um, but, I don't know, maybe it's okay. I mean, I want to see some of those games. Like, I can see the seeks for them. But in the actual game list, I can't see, like, the double-digit players um, doing these crazy blitz games. In the game list, I only get to see, like, the top players, or the most important games, or whatever. Um, and I don't often see blitz games in the games list. It's either I'm just confused, or I don't know. Yeah, let's take a look at some games, though. Uh, like, here we got 30 seconds um, Bioyomi times 5, 35 second Bioyomi, 10 minutes. Here we got something going on. It says 0, 0.0. That might be a timeout. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't see, like, how to view blitz games from this filter. You can look at, look at live games, you can look at correspondence games, you can show 28 at a time, and I guess from here you could see, um, but it's hard to pick out which ones are the blitz games, you know? Oh, here's one that looks like maybe a blitz game. Let's take a look at 130. Yeah. So it's a little tricky to get a, a view of just other people doing um, games that might be fun to watch. Just as a nice wrap-up to the stream. Um, anyhow. Yeah, it's crazy to me that somebody would play a 19x19 19 19 game with that kind of time control. I presume some people even play just the Bioyomi part. Where you start with, like, no time, and it's all Bioyomi. And you can take that to a further extreme and say, just maximum 10 seconds per move, every move. If you exceed 10 any move, they just forfeit the game instantly, which... Uh, I think I've seen people do chess that way. Um, I'm curious that I have, um, why our class hasn't shown up on the site as a time control, but... Probably because it encourages bad behavior. <laughs> so, yeah, here we've got an 8Q and a 4Q. Um, all kinds of stuff going on on the board. This is a thing you don't see very often 
I mean, you might see it in a beginner game, but like this big wall that's nine stones high. Um, usually if you see something like that in a beginner game, it means somebody's done something very wrong. Um, that one player is building a wall and the other player doesn't at all benefit from forcing them to build it. But um, here, like at a higher level, you have like influence versus territory. So this wall builds up all this influence toward the center. Black has to fight back against that influence. Black gets all this territory, yet it has all these defects. So yeah, go hyper bullet. I mean, the blitz, what they call blitz on the site is pretty fast. But yeah, if you could get like the folks at Lee Chess to make go a chess variant, maybe we'll see that. <laughs> I don't understand, like, well, I don't know, that's probably a more political decision than anything else, but why wouldn't you have non-chess games on the chess site? Why not expand it to include, like, draughts and go and stuff? I mean, draughts is brutal, but go could probably be done at any time control. Uh, pick a 15Q game and try to follow them. Yeah, this is too high for me to follow. I should pick something a little bit easier for me to follow. Preferably with a small board. Um, I can't see the board size from this view either. Which, that would be a nice thing to have. Alright, here's a Q game. Um, it's not a small board, though. Here, let's take a look at what else we got here. But yeah, I guess being able to filter this list to be cool. Um, you're saying 15Q, though. Um, I mean, here's a 15Q. Versus a 18Q. Here's a 16 versus a 15. This might be okay. Although it's so late in the game at this point. Black's surrounded here. White's built up a nice territory. Black gets killed. And um, black concedes, I presume? Because it looks like white's position's a lot better. Yeah, white wins by 25 and a half. So white covered Comey. Um, how'd this game go? Um, black? I don't know. Oh, he didn't... Black didn't get to play Tengen. Oh, okay, he did eventually get to play it, but... White played all these moves on the outside, and Black's got so many defects, and White's there to exploit all Black's defects, so unless White gets surrounded, um, yeah, and this is not so good for Black. So that connects, but, oh, that was Atari. Uh, that Atari's kind of painful now, isn't it? I would consider this E5 and F6 fully connected, so... Yeah, just trying to surround white seems rational. Um, different game. Very different game. Yeah, so he doesn't do that, but... I mean, what else are you going to do for white? The three stones in the center don't look that great. Um, I guess you Atari here, and then Atari there. I guess this is what black was stopping. And then Atari here. Um... 
Oh, that's not right. Um, easy 15Q. Super easy 15Q. There we go. Black wins. Easy peasy. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to play this. Oh, that's self Atari. Don't do that. Yeah, we got an Atari here. We just connect. Got an Atari there. Deal with it. Build upward. Um, do we keep building? Yeah, no, we just do this. So black loses two stones if he pursues that. So peace is found. But that was a far cry from what actually happened where black just... Yeah, I mean this is blitz. Things happen. So many things happen. Um, so black tried increasingly desperate plays to try to get something working and uh, it just didn't play out in his favor. But he did avoid losing more than three prisoners, so... Yeah, that's a thing. Let's see. Is there another uh, 15Q game? That's interesting. So if I go to page four, now I actually get to see the games. There's a double-digit Q. Nobody's played a single move game. That's cool. <coughs> um, we have another 15 out here. There's a 14 and a 15, but it's kind of slow. <coughs> here we go. Here's a fun one. Okay. Um, white's making a threat. Black's going to do something to respond to that threat. And then white's going to play another stone. It's wonderful commentary. So what I hear on the 9x9 board is that white's supposed to make two groups and that black is supposed to either take too much territory for that to be profitable for white or black's supposed to kill one of the groups. So here white's definitely going with making two groups. Or at least uh, trying to occupy more than one section of the board. And black has doing something. Um, like that left or upper left corner is Black's. Um, Black did cut through White's shape. Although this stone at the end is not looking so healthy. So White might be okay. I am curious if G8 is going to happen. Wait, why that? I guess it doesn't matter. And I guess this is just to build toward the other stones. But and I guess this is the safe way to do it, as opposed to E3 and D3, where black would be investing two more stones and probably losing them. Here, black does manage to push into this stick here. But... Um, yeah. I guess G8 isn't that important, or players disagree with me. There it is. G8 was huge, and Black has played G8. I'm sure they were all focused on many of other details in this um, position. So, 
Well, yeah, now White has to figure something out. Because H6 is kind of a threat. So. Um. Yeah, that's one way to deal with the H6 threat. Uh, so now white plays h6, and I'm not sure what that stone on h7 is doing. Oh, okay, so that's what it's doing, is helping black uh, play a first line stone. What's going on there? Oh wait, never mind. J7 just is self Atari. I mean, you're in Atari to begin with, but J7 doesn't improve it. So eventually, one of the players is going to take J7, or White just plays J6. Um. Meanwhile, there's actually other parts of the board. Um, so white threatens b5. Um, black threatens a2. White plays b5, because that's a big move. And yeah. Uh, maybe black does... I don't know. b5 was big. Yep, there's Atari. Though Atari might not have been the biggest move on the board. <laughs> White might have had better uh, with like B6, but maybe not. Maybe White can't afford such luxuries here. Yeah, but isn't black dead anyway? Well, I guess you have to play a5 eventually. But, um, but now black's got in b6 and a6. I would have liked to play b6 as white first, and then play the Atari. But maybe black lives somehow with, like, b1 or... I don't know. Maybe it was necessary to kill him immediately. Yeah, we're just watching, because I've played Go for like an hour here, so now we're just watching people play Go. Um, huh. I wonder if those were the two biggest moves, J7 and B4, in that order. I suppose they were in that order. Um, now you want to protect that J6 point. Well, actually, it's protected already. Never mind. Um, yeah. Both players pass, and that's the game. White wins by Comey. Yeah, okay, so you're saying that White should have um, pr uh, protected at b4 first. And he still wins, but he could have won by more. But, yeah. That's a tough break for Black. Man. Beginners would have fun just, like, filling in all of White's territory here. Just alternating black and white stones. Um, like, this black, I'd probably start with uh, h2 here. And, you know, just try to win it. Even though it's a completely lost cause. 
and so I'd be like playing H2 and then J3 and J5 and J6 and stuff and just constantly giving away stones trying to find a way to kill that group in the upper right which would be all for naught because white just plays like a J5 and it's all over but yeah beginners would have fun with that um, so what happened this game I mean both players played okay there were some mistakes but that happens in blitz okay so g8 was huge I'm not sure that h7 approaching the corner was the best play here um, but maybe black's in trouble either way. <sighs> so, I don't know. What if we just do this? Oh, the white does this. Never mind. Just kidding. Um, yeah, it's a bit late at this point. But, say, maybe back here. I don't know, you play this. Okay, white responds. Whatever. Um, you could still approach the corner. You could play more solidly. But, um, yeah, I don't know. opponent was angry because you kept on playing in um, his territory. <laughs> I'm sure he showed you eventually. He just played like the one stone that killed all your stones. You're like, oh, never mind. I guess I wasn't winning this after all. Yeah. I guess he knew what he was getting involved in, though when he plays a new player that whatever um okay so yeah here we have this interesting moment so i mean yeah you can't approach you can sacrifice this to approach the corner sure um what actually happened in the game was b4 which looks reasonable um, it's hard to suggest an improvement. Well, no, I'd want to play this straight away if I could. And then maybe this, and who knows. But maybe it's good to leave this idea in reserve. How is it that black got so separated here. How did we even get here? Okay, this is weird. I've never seen anybody open like this. This is black. Um, also, what about this? Ever think about this move? <laughs> um, black has no territory now. Just like it's just going for the very solid. In fact, there you go. Connect five. Black wins. Um. Yeah, this, this seems strange as black. I mean, where do you play? I don't know. But doing this symmetrically um, makes it makes your shape a little more predictable, I guess. Um, also, this is kind of weird to me. Like, you're making the stone useful. Why not just play there? I guess white has too much territory or something. Weird. What a strange opening. Um, 
so yeah. I guess I should mention that, like, so there is the Steam game Anci Ancient Go, right? Let's see if I can just brief briefly show the achievement list for the game. Because at some point I will double back and try to collect some of these achievements. Like, win a game! Um, apparently 58% of people who have played Ancient Go have won a game. The others probably got the game in the early access and haven't come back to it. Atari a stone. 31%. Wait. Wait. Something's not adding up here. That seems very improbable. One of these achievements must have been added before the other. I'm just saying. Um... But yeah, at some point it'd be fun to come back um, and try to win, or try to earn these achievements, you know. Playing Atari four turns in a row. Capture a group of four. Do a double Atari. Do a lot of captures over your lifetime. Turn off hints. Believe it or not, I have earned this achievement just by going to the settings menu, hitting the button to turn off the hints, and turning it back on. Um, win playing 7x7. Seven seven. Win three in a row. Complete the tutorials. Etc, etc. Capture, or connect 49 stones. I wonder if I could play against the computer, put it on, a, like, its weakest level, and then connect 49 stones against it. That'd probably earn the achievement. Um, yeah, proper etiquette, play in this upper right quadrant. Um... Connect the opposite sides of the board. Capture a group of 16. Connect all four sides of the board. Win 19 nine by 19 after opening on Tengen. 3% have done this. So, yeah, at some point it'll be fun to come back and try to get some of these. Winning 19 by 19 after opening Tengen seems like such a vulgar achievement. Um, I'm surprised it's not more popular. Uh, I guess this must be a pretty new achievement, because it seems like, given that 50% of people have won a game, um, you'd think that some of that 50% would look at the achievement list and be like, hey, that one sounds like fun. Even though it really doesn't, but, yeah. Yeah, no, I like that. It's a good idea to educate people. And then you have other fun challenges, like connect all five, four sides of the board, and win opening Tengen, and win despite your opponent capturing 25 stones. It seems to me like you could go out of your way to like get a winning position, and then, I don't know, somehow have co-threats or super co or some ridiculous something or other where you just keep giving away stones but you're still so far ahead um, that it doesn't matter or maybe just keep exchanging capture for capture with the opponent and somehow manage to win it I don't know that seems like one of the more tricky things also impressive lose 50 games is not something people who play this app have done um, many of them have won 100 games Fewer of them have lost 50, so make of that what you will. That really surprises me. Um, so, yeah. Anyhow, I hope this has been entertaining. Uh, I would say educational, but I'm the one apparently learning from all this, so. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We're going to play some other games soon. So, um,. See you next time.